Good morning, everyone. Today is March 11th, and this is zoology, and it's also beach day at school. So uh, that's why I'm dressed like this. Okay, so let's talk about breeding ewes quickly. Uh, we have moved on from breeding cattle, and just like uh, market lambs, you're going to kind of envision them as smaller steers. You can do the same thing when we're talking about breeding ewes. We're going to talk about a little bit of breeding character and that sort of thing. But the most important things that we're going to talk about are what a priority should be when we're talking breeding use, which are going to be very, very similar to uh, if you're judging a class of heifers. The most important thing that we're going to look at is structural correctness. Again, we plan for these use to be in our flocks for many, many years. If we don't have structurally correct ewes, we're gonna run into all sorts of problems. We need these ewes to be good on their feet and legs and be made correctly. So we're gonna make sure that they're structurally correct before we move on to much of anything. And then similarly to what we talked about in uh, beef cattle, when we're talking heifers, we're, then we're looking for volume, capacity. We want capacious heifers that are bold sprung and wide based. We want a little bit of muscle in there too, if we can include that in our volume category. But again, not like it's it's a different muscle, it's a more feminine muscle than in the when we talk about market animals. Verse, and then we talk, then we get into some pattern and balance, and we want sheep that are tall at the point of their shoulder, their neck ties in high at the point of their shoulder. They're smooth in their front end, they're picked up in their chest, they're clean fronted, they're level down their top, they're deep in their flank, level out of their dock, and those things all contribute to good pattern, good balanced sheep. We can talk a little bit about EPDs. Uh, we do have in the second class that we're gonna judge today is uh, has a scenario and a set of EPDs with it. That will be the last class that we judge for use, and I'll put that uh, your score for that class into Power School. Um, so there's a few different things that, and I can pull this up so that you can see this part, so that you can see the scenario that we're talking about here. So again, we've got birth dates, and then we have born raised. So when we're talking about sheep, for those of you who don't know, most of the time in sheep breeders would like for sheep to have twins. If every ewe lamb had a set of twins, they'd be, they'd be really happy. However, we get a bunch of singles and we also get some triplets. So it's important to know how those animals, whether they were born, twins, uh, singles, or triplets, and whether they were raised that way. So there are times in, in case uh, even, you may even every once in a while see a set of quads that they may be able to take some of those lambs away. If you got a ewe lamb who just has a single and maybe she loses that lamb for one reason or another, if it's possible, we can graph another uh, lamb or two onto that ewe so that she can uh, raise those other ewes as them uh, by herself it's going to encourage growth. Those lambs are going to be bigger and pounds heavier when they wean. So the, the fewer lambs that we can have on a U, if we can average two per U, that would be ideal. Twins are good. Singles are fine. Triplets, we start to get into seeing some, uh, if you see some smaller lambs uh, that are triplets, that might be the reason why. 150 day weight, very, very similar to uh, and we can stop sharing this. So I just wanted you to see that quickly. Um, your 150 day weight is very similar to yearling weight in cattle. It's, uh, if you think about it, it's about five months. That's when sheep are going to get to mature size. That's when they're going to be getting ready to go to market. We want them at 150 days to be very close to, you're going to want them somewhere between 120 and 150 pounds where they are getting ready to go to market already. LEA is loin eye area. We are going to, I can move Daisy so you can see her. Um, loin eye area is very important in sheep and hogs. We'll see that again when we 
uh, when we judge pigs. Next week, uh, Loyai area is again, it's just the circumference of, it's taking the area of their actual loin. If you took their last rib and sliced into their loin, how big is it? This is an indication of muscle. Coden 171. Has anybody ever heard of that before? Has anybody heard of scrapey before? Has anybody heard of mad cow disease before? Okay, so scrapey is the sheep version of mad cow. It's a neurological disorder that is 100% fatal. You do not want your lambs to get scrapey, okay? Coded 171 is a protein that indicates whether they, that sheep is susceptible to scrapey or not. So what we want is for them to be, have a recessive, and in fact, a double recessive gene for CODEM 171. So in this case, if you look at our example here, all three of these U's are RR, which means that they are recessive, which is a good thing. So a couple terms that uh, we want to talk about. I don't think we've talked about what the word seed stock means. Uh, you'll see that a lot in scenarios. I've probably said it out loud a few times. Seed stock refers to animals that are returning to the farm to get bred to raise more animals. And we are trying, this is what, it's, it particularly this usually refers to purebred livestock. So that we're sending them back and we're trying to improve the genetics of that particular breed with our seed stock. Breeding condition. We talked a little bit about how we don't want heifers to be super fat. Same goes for you lambs for two reasons. Number one, it, we talked about how it is more difficult for them to either calve or lamb. The other thing is that it's also more difficult for them to get bred. When you are artificially inseminating cattle or even if you are using a bull or a ram, um, it is much more difficult for fat ewes and heifers to get pregnant than for uh, ones with a, a lower body condition score. So we want these, a uh, little bit of fat's okay. Uh, we can uh, call that, you know, just kind of easy keeping. It doesn't take a ton of feed to, to keep them going, but we got to keep these uh, cattle and sheep in decent condition or else they, we have all kinds of breed problems. So. So that's kind of our uh, rough draft on, or our uh, you know rough course on breeding use. If you need, does anybody have any questions about anything that we talked about there in the last ten minutes or so? All right. Good morning, Sam. Glad you're with us. We just went through these notes on uh, breeding use. So I'm going to stop the.